Charles Whitetail, evening of November 11th, and Aiden and I came up here to Acorn Ridge uh, to make an evening sit. And right now we're set up in the plot we call the Bermuda Triangle. We call it that because pretty much anything that steps in this plot is, uh, is shootable, and plus it's, and it's shaped like a triangle. But a couple deer ran here after, and one being 305, and another being Crook. And 305 actually showed up this morning about, oh, I'd say about 6 o'clock. And then about 10 o'clock, a new deer, we, we don't think we have pictures of him, he showed up about 10.30 this morning. So this colder weather that moved in today has really got him up on their feet moving. 305's been kind of stagnant on the trail cameras, he really hadn't showed himself lately. But it's good to know he showed back up. Uh, early we had a couple does come out of that plot and they uh, come parallel with us to our north here. And I don't know if our wind's swirling or what happened, but they, right there. they blew. They're right behind us. They're, they're going down. Okay, and uh, anyways, they ran back into the plot. But, uh, like I said, it's cooled down a lot. It's, it was like 65 degrees yesterday, and now it's like in the 40s and or 50s. But we got a south, it's kind of like a west wind, but the next couple days are going to be uh, west and southwest wind, which is perfect for this spot. So we're going to be putting our time in here on Acorn Ridge. The bucks are starting to cruise. I think it's just starting to ramp up, but hopefully uh, a mature buck will get on their feet moving uh, this afternoon. As you can see, we just had an encounter with our number one hit list buck, 305. I was just sitting here, scrolling through my phone, and I look up, and all I see is rack. And immediately I knew that it was a big deer. And then I kind of, I seen that left side, how it sways up, and I was like, it's 305. Got the camera on him, and he just stuck out of range about 55 yards the whole time. I grunted at him, he didn't, he looked up, but he just didn't want nothing to do with it, and he just kept walking. It's almost like just he was he was dead dead said that he was gonna fight a doe. And he went started going back off toward the west and I rattled at him. He may have looked up, I can't really tell. It's not over yet. I mean I wasn't gonna push that kind of shot. I'm just not comfortable with it. And with this wind it's just swaying this tree around, so the night's not over. He could very well come back through here. Or another mature buck could come through here, but that's reassuring that he is back in the area and he just daylighted right in front of us. So hopefully he'll swing back there and we can get another shot at him this evening. Shoot, shoot it right here, shoot it right here. Where? Come here again. 
helped you. I helped you. He dumped him. He dumped him. He dumped him. He's gonna die right there. Go down. He's gonna die right there. He's dead. Look at me. Oh, baby. 305 dead. 305 dead. That is insane. I've never had that. That that buck, we seen him skirt us at 57, and he went west. And we knew he was gonna come back through. And sure enough, I rattled two bucks to a, a sh another shooter, went to the food plot, and then Hayden said 305's coming down the trail running a doe. And sure enough, he comes down the trail, 10 yards, double lung demon, he's dead right there. Man, nobody deserves more than you. Thank you, man. Thanks for sticking with me, man. Dude, and 305's dead. First blood on a piece of property that we own. Yeah, we bought this farm April 20. We closed on it April 26th. And that is first blood on our own ground. We have worked our butts off, made the money, made the payments, and it just paid off right there in the Bermuda Triangle Blue food plot. That is awesome, and he's dead right there. 100 yards, dead. 150 inch deer, dead. 305, five year old, five year old, and he's dead. Dude, I freaking love you. Cheers, man. Yes. That's awesome. I gotta call him. Call, call Tyler, call Tyler. 305's dead. He's dead. Eight yards. Eight, eight, eight yards under the stand, double lunged him, and he's dead 150 yards. Well, here we are, November 11th, and I'm ecstatic to be sitting behind my biggest buck to date. And to do it on our own property is just, uh, is just something special to me. And back in the spring, me and Aiden, we took a gamble and bought 30 acres here. And uh, we always had the dream of owning our own ground and being able to do what we want on it and just killing big deer. And the cuttybacks, they were pretty slow in the summertime, but as September and October rolled in, the buck started rolling in too. And this was one of them, 305. Uh, our first picture we had of him, it was in this plot we're sitting in right now, and he kind of disappeared in October. We kind of uh, unpressured it, and he showed back up in November. And uh, this morning, we had pictures of him on the Cuddy back uh, at 6 o'clock, and Aiden and I decided to, to make the drive up here tonight. And as you can see, it paid off. We believe uh, this deer to be uh, five and a half, and uh, I'm just so ecstatic to just be sitting behind this deer right now. I'm kind of speechless at the moment, but uh, I'm just so thankful to be a part of the Midwest Whitetail team and uh, for this to be the first full hunt on the show. I'm just so thankful for that. And uh, with that being said, thanks for tuning in to Midwest Whitetail. several times and seeing good buck activity every time I sit here just kind of transition area and there's a field out here in front of me they kind of use this field to run the edges of two bedding areas so uh, there's two bucks I know that are in here that are shooters just got to catch up with them I've seen one of them once so hopefully 
I can have some luck this morning. Got the decoy out, but there's three cows on the property I'm on and they knocked it over. So I'm hoping I can slip down once they move off a little bit and get down and set it back up. So it should be a great day. It's about 40 degrees, it rained over the night last night and quit about midnight. So deer should definitely be on their feet. So we'll see what happens. plan was not to sit all day but <laughs> I kind of got stuck that buck was between me and my vehicle and uh, last time I saw him was about a little over an hour ago and it looked like he kind of maybe went down in the creek but I thought his doe was still bedded but I haven't seen him or her since he did that and actually the landowner just drove in here and he was up on the hill for a little bit and he just drove back out so I'm not real sure whether the buck's still over there or whether he got ran out or whether he moved on or I'm not really exactly sure what happened but hopefully he can uh, maybe make his way in here before dark and also I saw that good buck uh, earlier real early this morning uh, 
one also when this other one was out here on this doe so either of those two bucks could easily still come in got about a couple hours left and the deer been moving pretty much all day there was a little bit of a drought there the past couple hours but i think the movement will pick up here as we get closer to dark so it should be interesting the deer should move hopefully i can get lucky sure that my footage is gonna be able to do this hunt any justice at all. I mean it's just been easily the best hunt of my life. I've seen I'd say 15 to 20 bucks, two shooters, and this shooter's been over here all day. He's still over here. It's been really hard to film him because where he's at, the limbs on my I gotta film through the limbs on my tree which are really thick to my south. And he's also been in the timber. So it's been really hard to get any footage of him over there all day. It's been hard to see him, let alone get footage. But uh, I got a little bit of time left and a slight chance. Uh, I get a shooter to come by, but I, it's, been, it's been an amazing hunt. I just heard the biggest fight I've ever heard. I don't, I don't think the audio picked it up. But there was a huge fight to my north down in the water. I could hear snort wheezes. I could hear antlers crashing. I'd say there's a good chance one of the bucks in that fight was that other shooter I saw early this morning. So great sit. I can't sit in the morning, but I can sit for the rest of the weekend. So uh, should be a fun weekend if things are anything like they were today. So gonna keep going hard. And if every hunt's like this, I'd never get tired of it. So. Hopefully eventually I can line one out and get one.